So is it possible to 3D print quality car parts without spending a small fortune? As a beginner looking to 3D print, there's hundreds of different printer options. And the last thing you want to do is spending tons of time troubleshooting your 3D printer instead of actually printing like we did when we first started. So we're going to be testing things out with the Bamboo Lab A1. And its bed size can print parts up to 10 inches wide to 10 inches long to around 10 inches high. So the great thing is you can snag up one of these printers for less than 400 bucks, which is a steal. So could this be the perfect 3D printer for beginners? Let's test it and find out. After unboxing the A1, some assembly is required. You can use the QR code for digital directions, or you can use the traditional paper manual, which is pretty easy to follow. The A1 also includes all the tools you need, and the nice thing is everything is properly color-coded. Next up is loading the filament using an included top mount bracket. The filament feeds right into the top through a tube into the hot end. Now you can fire up your printer and follow the on-screen instructions. The printer will run through its initial calibration tests and the printer also indicated us to make sure that the rails are lubricated with the included grease. The final step is selecting your filament and finishing the loading process. The A1 automatically feeds the filament and cuts off the excess all by itself. Oh, and don't forget to uncover the camera. So this thing is fast. It's like three times faster than our older printer. And take a look at the results. This is a V6 engine block, and it's amazing. Just look at the detail. I mean, for as small as this thing is, it came out amazing. And if you look at the backside, it's got that nice texture on it as well. Now, there's a lot of debate whether or not you should buy a printer that just works right out of the box, but I'll let you argue that within the comment sections below. Now, when it comes to 3D printing car parts, you'll need to make sure you choose the right filament. We're going to unload the PLA, which is great for indoor parts, but will melt in the sun. So for our interior car parts, we'll be using PETG high flow filament, which can handle sunlight exposure. The only downside to PETG is you need to make sure moisture is removed to get a good print. So you need a small filament dryer, which you can pick up for less than 40 bucks. Bamboo recommends to dry the filament for a few hours, and we'll make sure to leave a link in the description with the details. So while our filament dries out, we're gonna go ahead and prep some of our 3D file car parts. So the first thing we're going to do is select our printer, which is the Bamboo Lab A1, and then we can select our specific filament. So we're going to change our color over to black, and then we're also going to select our filament type. So we're going to select PETG, and then adding the files is pretty easy. We found this plastic interior nut for one of our project cars on Thingiverse, and they have tons of free files that have already been created that you can literally drag and drop into Bamboo Studio. If you take a look at all these other settings, there's lots of stuff here, but you really don't have to touch anything because those filament profiles have everything predefined as well as when you selected the printer. So once we have our file in here, we can hit the slice plate and that's gonna show us all the details. We can see how long the file is gonna take. We can see the filament that's going to be used and we can even see the cost breakdown for this particular part. Now, once we're ready, we just hit print plate and then we're gonna go ahead and select our printer and send this off as a print job. And we can do this all via wireless. So let's get this printing. Now, instead of wasting time printing just one or two, I cloned the object and printed 20 all at once, which we'll show you how to do on the next part. Let's get rid of the old one and let's give this guy a try. So these smaller parts work pretty well, but now we're going to test out some more larger parts. So this part is much taller, almost five inches taller. It's an e-brake handle that we previously 3D scanned and made into a 3D file. We'll make sure to leave a link to that video in the description. So the part came out pretty cool. It's got the grip and everything looks good except for one part. Take a look at this seam. So you'll get seam lines like that. That's pretty common. There is something that you can do in the software to make that line go away. So let me show you what it is. 
So as we slice our part, you can actually see the seam line going straight through the middle of our part. You can search for seam and you can change that seam position to the front or back, or you can randomize it, but that's still going to leave the seam there or it's gonna have dimples all over the part. Now, another feature we're gonna to try to use is what's called fuzzy. So go in the search and you can look for fuzzy skin. And here you can select contour and we'll slice again. Now, what that's gonna do is that's gonna get rid of that seam line from showing up and give our part a texture. Now, it is a little aggressive, so we're gonna back off. And what we're gonna do is we're going to first add a modifier and the modifier allows us to be specific on where we do certain settings like the fuzzy skin. So here we can add this block and we can increase the size and pull it up and we'll go pretty much almost to the very top. And here you can see that our modifier is positioned right into the middle of the part. And now what we can do is we can go back to the special mode, add some contour. We'll change this to three and two to make the fuzzy skin a little less aggressive. Hit slice and there you go. So now we have this nicer fuzzy skin only in the part where we're going to have the grip for the e-brake. And the other cool thing is you can come in here and you can right click and clone this to make more than one. So we do have a friend that wants one of these two. Let us know if you want one as well. You can hit the clone and make two. And this is what we did with the nut on the earlier print job. You can clone as many times as you want to fit the entire build plate. Just be mindful that it's gonna take a lot more time to print. And here, if we slice again, we can see that this is actually gonna take three hours and 53 minutes for this print. So let's send this off to the printer and see how it comes out. So here's the first one that we printed. And again, you can clearly see that line. Here is the fuzzy setting that we just inserted. And not only does it hide that line, but for this part, it gives a nice grip feeling to this part. So now it's time to put the A1 up to a much harder test. So we found this fuse box, which will take up a larger portion of the build plate. One reason to lay the part flat is to make sure you minimize the supports that will be used to hold up horizontal sections. Bamboo Studio even warns you if you don't have supports enabled. To enable supports, search for support and select enable. We also like to use the tree option because they're much easier to remove from the print. But there's one more reason you might want to lay a part flat. Here's the larger part and you can see our trees there, which should hopefully peel right off. We have a little bit of peeling up right there. But what I found out with these textured beds is that they are supported more for the PLA, not necessarily PETG. So we are kind of in a bit of gray waters. So if you decide to use these plates along with PETG or PETG, I should say, is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the surface is 100% clean because the last thing you want is any oils from your hands or fingers or touching the plate to get onto the part. But we've got some other stuff that we've tried with these textured plates as well. And check how this one came out. That's freaking awesome. This is a pretty common project car part creating a custom radio delete with switch buttons. And let's drop it in to see how it looks. Now, if you're still hesitant about picking up the Bamboo Lab A1, there's actually one other trick this printer has up its sleeve. For another 150 bucks, you can add an AMS light or an automatic material system. The AMS light lets you feed up to four different filaments to the A1, which will allow you to 3D print a part with up to four different colors. So we loaded it up with our dried PET G filament, followed the on-screen instructions, and the A1 automatically fed and cut the filament into position.
so I think you're gonna like this. It's a multicolored shifter for our project car. And you can see we used a couple of the different settings. We used the fuzzy setting, and we used three different colors, red, white, and black, all printed at the same time. Now what's great is you can use Bamboo Studio to paint objects that you pull in. You can literally select the paint bucket tool and highlight different parts in different colors that are in your AMS system to 3D print. And the results are pretty amazing. There is one slight downside to this though, is one, you're gonna have what's called a purge tower. So what this is for is to make sure that as the filament is being laid into each line, that we don't get the bleed through of say red to white and so on and so forth. And you'll also have what's called a piece of filament poop. So as the system removes the filament from the line and then adds the other color into the line to feed, it's going to purge a certain amount in order to do the color change. And if you'd like us to make even more content around car parts using advanced filaments, let us know in the comments below. But until then, if you're interested in scanning and making your own parts, watch this video up next.